Hello, my friends. The CAPM exam is one of the most accessible project management exams that you can take. It's not easy, though. You still need to study a whole lot, and there's a lot of content. In 2023, the exam is changing. Today, I'm going to walk through the changes with you and show you what exactly is changing on this exam. In 2023, we're starting a series of masterclasses for the CAPM exam. And the masterclass is absolutely needed because the exam has grown in leaps and bounds. To take the exam, you need a high school diploma and 23 hours of formal project management education, which you get from this course. To learn more, go on down to the website. It's praiseon.com. But let's talk about what this exam contains. A very high level, you have domains, four domains. The first domain is project management fundamentals and core concepts. It's 36% of the exam. The second domain is specific to predictive project management. It's called predictive plan-based methodologies. The next domain, domain three, is based on the adaptive frameworks and methodologies, 20% of the exam. Last but not least, we have a rather significant component which is about business analysis. And this is 27% of the exam. And this goes into all that you need to know about the roles of the BA, what exactly is done in business analysis and requirements gathering, so on and so forth. Before we go any further, why don't we take a look at PMI's page for the CAPM exam? Right here, you can see PMI's page for the CAPM. This is where you can get all the information needed to prepare. Again, all you need to do is come to our course for the CAPM. You've got your high school diploma. You are set to go. So there's information on this page that helps you understand what exactly is changing in 2023 in the content outline and knowing how to prepare. There's the handbook. There is a sample set of questions for the CAPM, and you can just still the frame and take a look at these when you get a moment. And then again, we have all of the details. So let's jump into the details for the CAPM. It says, the new CAPM will continue to test the common practices and fundamentals of project management, but will expand to integrate content across predictive business analysis and agile principles, all to ensure professionals know how to use different project delivery approaches. We know you have been preparing for the CAPM using the PMBOK guide, PM basic course, or other study material. We also know that agile and business analysis may be new to you. We created this reference study guide to help you navigate the multiple reference books, including the PMBOK guide, seventh edition. And you can find the name of the reference book and chapter on the left and the details on the right. So let's take a look. First of all, we talk about section one, the core concepts, right? That domain, domain one, the core concepts, you get the information from Pembroke Guide seventh edition. We already have a course fully developed for your understanding of the seventh edition. Highly advise you to come aboard our program and dive straight into that course, whether you want to study online by yourself or whether you want to come into our live class in January. Starts January 4th. Take a look at the Praiseon site for more. But here we have the chapters in the book and the different ECO task number that they map to. Let's make this a bit smaller. So the fundamentals and the core concepts, chapter one, chapter two, agile frameworks and methodologies, they are covered all throughout this book on the left. So it behooves you to know your PMBOK guide seventh edition because as you go through the different chapters in the seventh, references are made to the CAPM, as you can see here in this guide. All right. Something they have here is a checkbox option for you to just check the box. So you could print this and just check the box to ensure that you've covered these concepts. That's really what this is for. All right. And this is freely available on PMI's website. As you begin to hit the third, chapter, you can see more and more. So it's not done as coherently as I would have liked, but they refer you to which aspect in the content outline 
is covered across the chapters in the seventh edition. Then we get into the second book, which is the Agile Practice Guide. And again, you can see all of these frameworks and methodologies in Agile. You need to be aware of them, the core concepts, chapter five, which has to do with a lot of the practices. This is expanded, see? And then we get into business analysis for practitioners, a practice guide. And again, there's no escaping going over this book. We have chapters one, two, three, four, five. You can see it's going into all of these business analysis frameworks in a lot of detail. Then we have a couple of books which the PMI makes reference to, and you can see how they map what you need to know here to the book. And going down, we can see we have some more information, the PMI Guide to Business Analysis 2017, again, mapping back. So it's a huge map, and it's a lot to navigate. You need to allow someone who is willing to help you help you. And that person would be me. I want to help you navigate this terrain. Like I said, I've taken the CAPM exam twice because PMI needed us to take it every five years. So you've got someone who has taken this test and knows the nuts and bolts, okay? Now, we're having classes starting on the 4th of January. We're going through this piece by piece. We have our own study guide that will help you put these multiple pieces, this potpourri, this collection of information. We're going to help you package it, put it together in one place so you're not going crazy reading five documents for this exam. <laughs> We're going to help you. And I'm going to start tonight. We are going to begin going over the content for the exam. I want to show you that it's not as bad as it looks. I know it looks ferocious. It looks like a lot of content but it's not. And that's why we're going to jump straight in. All right. So now you've got an idea about the requirements, the prerequisites for the exam. Let's jump straight in. So the very first domain, like I said in the beginning, is project management fundamentals. The fundamentals that you need to know are all about what is a project, what is a program, what is a portfolio. A project is a temporary endeavor that you undertake to deliver a unique deliverable to give the customer, an end result, an outcome, value, and benefits. The difference between predictive and adaptive approaches are that predictive is quite prescriptive. Agile is quite emergent, and you are discovering as you go along a series of experiments to find the world of best fit. Again, when we use the word agile, you've got to know that agile is a mindset. I am going to be showing you the deep dregs of agile, such that even before we get out of the gate going into business analysis or anything else, you will have a very firm foundation in Agile. So we are going to feed our students the same content we do for our primers for the PMP and the ACP. All right. So as far as understanding project life cycles, process, the difference between predictive and adaptive, we are going deep into that. Demonstrating an understanding of project management planning, what exactly you plan and how you plan. Again, you are going to come away with very solid knowledge, understanding the different elements, cost, quality, risk, schedule, stakeholders, communications, and so on. Next, you're going to go through the demonstrated an understanding of project roles and responsibilities in the seventh edition. There's a very precise set of things that are talked about under this section. We are going to be exploring those. Task four, determine how to follow and execute plan strategies or frameworks, communication, risk, and so on. So how it is appropriate to respond to a plan strategy or framework. We are going through a lot of situational, real world examples for you to really grasp this area. Task five, demonstrate an understanding of common problem solving tools and techniques. And there's a whole lot of them, everything from the good old DIGSIV approach to the sailboat, brainstorming, focus groups, and more. Domain two, as I promised, we are going into the predictive plan-based methodologies. So, 
explaining when it is appropriate to use predictive is covered really well in a model called the Stacy model. We're going to be showing you this. We're going to be showing you the concept of co-location, virtualization, different matrix types so that you truly understand the nuts and bolts of predictive project management and what it's based on. Task two is demonstrating an understanding of a project management plan. And we're going to be talking about the schedule, the WBS, work packages, and how you integrate the project plan. Then we'll talk about how to document the controls of predictive plan-based projects. So artifacts that are used in predictive plan-based projects, how you calculate cost and schedule variance. Of course, understanding earned value will be part of this. Domain three is all about adaptive frameworks. This is the world of Agile. First of all, you've got to understand Agile is a mindset. Then you've got to understand when is it appropriate to use an adaptive approach versus a predictive approach. And that will be well covered by the time we get here through the Stacy model. Task two is determining how to plan project iterations. There are different ways you plan these iterations. Really, we call it sprint planning in the world of Scrum, but we'll talk about how to distinguish logical units of iterations, pros and cons of the iteration, translating this WBS to an adaptive iteration. How do you chunk the work? What would make you break down work in a particular way? Inputs for scope and the importance of adaptive project tracking, how that differs from predictive plan-based tracking. The bottom line is this, in a sprint, we're more focused on working together to get the work done. We already know we have a time box, so that takes away our focus on time box, time box, time box. In the water predictive, however, our focus is so much on, we got to get this done to this milestone. So the concept of scope and milestones and cost, they're really emphasized. And they're emphasized as far as what is the grand scheme of the budget? Have you gone over budget? Are you within budget? What is the schedule looking like? Can you ever recover? And things like that. By the time we're done, you'll have a firm grasp of the language. Task three, determining how to document project controls for an adaptive project. Again, the way we work adaptively is different. We use burn ups, we use burn downs, we use higher level osmotic information that is dispersed versus heavy communications done in the world of predictive. All the components of what you would call an adaptive plan will be talked about. And there are many ways you can plan adaptively. We have the concept of visioning and road mapping and iteration plans, release plans, uh, sprint planning. We are going in on all of those concepts for you. Task five, determine how to prepare and execute task management steps. So interpret success criteria of an adaptive project management task and then prioritize. By the time we're done, you are going to be thinking like a product owner. Domain four, this is the final one, and this is business analysis frameworks. So with this, you got to understand what the BA does and what the role of the BA is. You got to understand why you need to identify stakeholders and differentiate between internal and external roles played on a project. Task two, determine how to conduct stakeholder communication. Task three, determine how to gather requirements. There's so many ways, interviews, surveys, workshops, lessons learned, and so on. Understanding the RTM, the requirements traceability matrix and the product backlog, these are important here. Demonstrating an understanding of product roadmap. So we're going in on the roadmap like laser focused for you to truly see what it does and understand its relevance. Task five, determine how project methodologies influence business analysis processes. Determining the role of the business analysis in the world of agile and in the world of predictive is something we're gonna do here. And then validating requirements through product delivery, defining acceptance criteria, the actions of defining changes based on the situation, determining if a project or product is ready for delivery based on a requirements traceability matrix 
or a product backlog. And you can see they're kind of interweaving these concepts of predictive and of course, agile. So going back, my friends, to list, there is a laundry list of things to be done, but it absolutely can be done. So I want to encourage you, my friends, if you're thinking of coming for this training, go on down to projectmanagementdoctor.com forward slash cap and live projectmanagementdoctor.com forward slash cap and live. Like I said, we're going in on this content. This is the winning class that you want to be on to help give you all that you need beyond the test. This is actually beyond the test. Getting certified is one thing. Being able to sustain what you've learned and propel yourself is another. This course will help you do just that. All right. Thanks for joining. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the classroom. Bye for now.